three. Welcome to the Terran Files. I'm Jamie Young, and today I am joined with Brian Catcher, who is a writer of young adult books. Um, he has won the 2011 Stonewall and Young Adult Literary Award for Almost Perfect, and the winner of the 2010-2011 North Carolina Young Adult Books Award um, for Playing With Matches. Um, let's start off with Almost Perfect. All right. Um, very, I read through the reviews and also the um, synopsis and um, a very well, from what I can tell, it was a very well written uh, story between a relationship with a cisgender boy and a transgender girl. Um, from the reviews, um, you pretty much hit it on the nose. Um, and I am being trans myself. I am very impressed that somebody who is cisgender could relate to what chan uh, the transgender uh, community deals with. Well, thank you very much. Uh, but I have to say, just because the professional book reviewer viewers liked it doesn't mean all public uh, all the public liked it. I, I've heard from a lot of transgender people who said I absolutely nailed it on the head, and I've heard from a lot who said I absolutely blew it, and that's not how uh, it works at all. And I take those uh, criticisms very seriously. Uh, my only excuse is I was one of the first young adult authors to write about a transgender character, and I tried my hardest, and I think in some parts I succeeded, in some parts I really feel I failed. And uh, the fault is mine, but I'm glad I was able to uh, put the issue out at a time when you uh, saw the snow books about transgender people in uh, young adult literature. Yeah, yeah, most of the uh, books that have been written have been by transgender people, and they've been always meant for the adult community, not so much for the young adults. Now, um, during in one of the reviews, it mentions that the uh, trans character attempt at suicide, which is not uncommon within the trans community. Um, you know, my own experience with suicide in itself, which is a definite uh, thing to point out. Um, but um, yeah, um, though, be quite honest, you are very popular, um, uh, <laughs> especially with the Florida Tea Party. Yeah. <laughs> they want to burn your book, so. You <laughs> uh, 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 you, you know, you, you know uh, who your friends are, I guess, by who your enemies are. And uh, uh, the Florida Tea Party did try to have Almost Perfect removed from uh, high school libraries unsuccessfully, I'm happy to say. But I look at other books on that list, and I am just honored to be in a, such a impressive company. I'm like, wow, I, I never thought I'd uh, be on a uh, book list with Toni Morrison. Yeah, yeah. Now, now all you have to do is get into the limelight of, say, um, Thomas Wolfe um, and others that have been said that we need to get rid of. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like, like some of Shakespeare's plays. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, a, I'm a librarian myself and at the lower elementary le level, so it's, uh, I don't deal with that as much, but pretty much any book, there's gonna be somebody who says it shouldn't be uh, in the library. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna read it, therefore nobody should read it. Yeah, which makes no sense whatsoever. But um, playing with matches, you bring into that the whole um, precept of um, image. 
you know, and one of the characters is a girl that um, was burned and she still has the scars from that. Um, a lot of kids tend to not understand that um, it's best to look beyond what you see. And um, like I say, I only read the uh, reviews in this, but um, from what I can tell, it gets right to the point of um, skin, flesh, it's who the person is. Well, thank you very much. That was my uh, very first book, and it's about a kid named Leon, who is a just shameless author avatar, who's in high school. He's really uh, has trouble finding a girlfriend. He wants nothing more in life than a girl who will just accept him for who he is. And then all of a sudden he finds it, but this girl has a, a face that's badly disfigured, and he has to decide, do I want to date somebody like this? especially when his longtime crush all of a sudden is showing an interest in him. And uh, we, we think back, we like to think it's only teenagers who make this mistake, but really it uh, uh, happens in adulthood too. Mm -hmm. uh, do we uh, are, are obsessed with the superficial, the outward appearance, and uh, skip over people who uh, would be much, much better for us yeah. simply because they're disfigured or overweight or just not as beautiful as society says. Right, right. And uh, be quite honest, we all fall into that category. Mm -hmm. But um, it was an interesting, uh, from what, um, like I say, from what I could tell, very interesting. Um, another one of the books that kind of struck me too is um, Deacon Locke, I think, name is went to the yes. prom and that deals a lot with race and religion and that interplay uh yes yes um deacon lock it's the story of a uh, high school senior who's uh, he's a very awkward boy and he ends up taking his uh, grandmother to prom when he learned she didn't get to go to her own prom because her boyfriend who was his grandfather uh, was serving in Vietnam at the time. Mm -hmm. And that's the uh, main gist, but the uh, secondary plot is that he uh, meets a girl his own age, a girl named Soraya, and uh, she is a Lebanese Muslim. And when they start dating, he, uh, he he's kind of a sheltered guy, and he doesn't realize what a big deal that is to some people and how not everybody can look past the person. They always, uh, they tend to see people as a religion or a race or a stereotype and uh he he has to uh confront that kind of head on and this is a guy who's never actually dated before. Mm -hmm. but um i know that a couple of your books are just um light-hearted um fun reading um let's see here the improbable theory of ann and zach about them I, uh, going to a sci-fi convention. I uh, that's that's one of my favorite books. My uh, editor asked me to write a book uh, similar to Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, which was about a couple of uh, very cool kids uh, who had a uh, just crazy night. And she said, "I want you to write a book like that, but I don't want them to be cool. I want them to be a couple of nerds." And I thought, "Well, you you come to the right guy there." <laughs> Uh, but where could nerdy kids go that's open all night and a lot of crazy things happen? And I think uh, to a place that's near and dear to my heart, Comic-Con. So mm -hmm. it's the story of uh, a couple of kids. Anne is a very straight-laced type A personality, very driven. Zach is a big slacker uh, who just does enough to get by. They're polar opposites. But during this crazy night, they realize they have a lot in common and uh, they just have a heck of an adventure over uh, about they would say 36 hours. Yeah, it uh, kind of reminded me of um, the 80s movie. Um, oh. Adventures in Babysitting? Right. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, that, that was a really classic and good movie. I enjoyed that. Always had a crush on Elizabeth Shue. 
<laughs> yeah, but um, and the other one is kind of very intriguing. Everyone dies at the end. Um, there's flashbacks into it going back over a hundred years, it seems like. Yeah, almost a hundred years. Yeah, no, over a hundred years. Over a hundred years, yeah. <laughs> that was the result of me reading uh, way too much H.P. Lovecraft when I was in college. Um, <laughs> I, I, I went to the University of Missouri at Columbia, and it's such a beautiful old campus, and I always thought uh, there, there's got to be uh, some ghost here. There's uh, There's got to be... Uh, something supernatural going on here and I just wrote a story about a uh, kid who uh, realizes there was a spate of murders that happened uh, around the campus in the uh, 1930s but nobody ever really fully investigated this. He starts to uh, try to dig up the past and he realizes that the organization that uh, was responsible for this is still around and very much wants to shut him up permanently. So it was uh, just my my uh, one attempt at a uh, uh, horror novel. Oh, it sounds like a fun book for anybody at any re age to read. Well, thank um, you. But um, when did you actually start writing? When did I start writing? Um, you know, everybody's asked me. Uh, I guess you always wanted to be a writer, and the answer is no. That really never occurred to me when I was growing up. If somebody had said, why don't you uh, uh, do some writing? I would have said, yeah, why don't I uh, do some math too while I'm at it? I'm not going to do that. And that's a big regret in my life is if I had started writing when I was 15, I'd be a much better writer now. But uh, as it was, I never wrote a single thing creatively till I was 25. I was living down in Mexico. My girlfriend at the time announced she was moving to Germany. So adios. And just sitting there completely broke and bummed out in Mexico, I thought, I got to write a book. Um, and <laughs> I never uh, thought it would ever be published, but it actually turned out to be playing with matches. So um, being broke and miserable in Mexico, that's that's one way to, to start start your writing career. Oh, yeah. Well, it gives you something to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I also find it interesting um besides you bumming around in mexico um you spent some time hanging out in an israeli military base yes yes that was how, uh, how how did you manage that it's a program called volunteers israel and uh if you sign up with that they give you non-combat uh work to do on the military base in order to uh keep reservists from being called up and, you know, in exchange, you live in Israel, you can travel on the weekends, they provide your room and board on the base. It's a, it's a great way to see a beautiful, beautiful country uh, uh, on the cheap. Though I have to tell you, if there's one thing worse than uh, military food, it's a uh, kosher military food. <laughs> yeah, and uh, during Vietnam, they can, well, during Korea and Vietnam, all they complained about was eating spam. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, another little venture you had was uh, smuggling food into Cuba. Is that kind of like people trying to smuggle drugs into the U.S. or? <laughs> uh, you cut out a little bit there. You're talking about when I smuggled food into Cuba. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was when I was living in Mexico, and this was a uh, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, it was uh, very hard for Americans to travel to Cuba but you could travel there from Mexico. So a friend and I uh, decided to go over there for a, a few days uh, just to see. And uh, we had a friend who uh, whose mother lived in Cuba and she asked us to uh, take a care package over to her just with a bunch of food and toiletries that she couldn't get over there. So, you know, I did that. And uh, later I thought, I just took a bag I did not open into a country with no American embassy. Uh, that uh, was probably not the smartest uh, move in the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I, I would have to uh, agree on that. Um, but getting back to the uh, first three books, Almost Perfect, Playing with Matches, and um, Dean Locke went to the prom. Um, 
what was your concept when it came to the characters and how they would be both the um, major and minors? Well, uh, it, when I started writing, playing with matches, that was just shamelessly uh, taken from my high school experience. The main character was me, the teachers were my teachers, the parents were my parents, the friends were my friends. It was very easy to uh, draw from life. So uh, that, 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 the characters came easily there. Mm -hmm. When I wrote Almost Perfect, however, I had never met a uh, out transgender person, an openly transgender person. So I thought when I write uh, the character of Sage, she was the uh, girl, um, I, I have to do this right. I, I can't come off like some novice uh, writing from his ignorance. So I got on the internet and I talked to a lot of transgender people and I said, I'm writing a book and I have questions. So if anybody can help me out, and you know, the internet's anonymous. So a lot of people said, yes, this is, this is my story. This is how X, Y, and Z works. And the more I heard people's story, the more I thought, wow, I want to tell this story. I, I want uh, people to, uh, to, to uh, hear about this issue. And uh, some people like Almost Perfect or they hate it, but I have never heard anybody say they didn't like Sage. She is uh, by far my most successful character, I would have to say. Yeah. Um, and uh, what about uh, Dean Locke? Deacon Locke, um, the plot of this book, my editor uh, came up with said, I want you to write this book. And this is where I learned the lesson, always listen to your editor, because most of my male characters are charmingly nerdy guys. And I thought, let me get away from that. I'm gonna write a guy who is just so completely out of touch with society, uh, it's going to be hilarious. Well, I ended up writing a guy who was uh, about as charming as Frankenstein's monster. And my <laughs> editor said, no, nah, go back. And so I went back, I did the uh, charming nerd thing, and it worked out a lot better. I just certain authors have a certain type of character they're good at, and that's the, that's apparently uh, what I'm good at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, you also do a lot of traveling around the country too, um, as you as I've seen on your uh, posts, your recent uh, little excursion. Uh, yes, yes. Um, because of the COVID, uh, you know, my wife and I were both school teachers, so we travel with our daughter over summer a whole lot. Um, I uh, recently visited my 50th state last summer, and uh, my wife Sandy has been to 49. Uh, we were going to hit Idaho this uh, summer, but because of COVID, we won't get on a plane, and we were just banging our heads off the walls, uh, so we thought we're going to take a socially distancing vacation. We borrowed my mother-in-law's trailer. We went through 11 states, five national parks, um, didn't go inside any buildings except gas stations, uh, camped every night. Uh, we were gone for two weeks, and it was just a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, um, in your travelings, um, you made it up to Vermont yes. and Montreal. Yeah, yeah that was a, that was a, that was a couple of summers ago. Mm -hmm. um, we we uh, like to play a game called Ticket to Ride. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a game about traveling to different U.S. cities by railroad, and our goal was to play Ticket to Ride in every city on the Ticket to Ride game, so I drove through Montreal rush hour traffic just so we could play uh, Ticket to Ride in Montreal. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been up in Montreal twice and I got lost, so. <laughs> I, I, can, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, in one of your travels, you have to make it up to Burlington, Vermont, in Plattsburgh, New York. Okay, I, I would like that. I, I uh, was going to visit a friend in Burlington uh, when we were in Vermont last, but we ne we never uh, ended up making it. So next time I'm back there, I will have to check that out. Is that mm -hmm. where you're from? Uh, well, um, actually, I grew up in the Air Force. Oh. Yeah. Um, my um, Family was stationed at March Air Force Base in Riverside, California, and that was back in '64, and that's when I was born. Then okay, from there, 
then from there we went to Carswell, Whiteman, Plattsburgh. Okay, my father was uh, in the Air Force at about the same time. He was in uh, uh, Little Rock. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's how I got to Plattsburgh. <laughs> okay. And uh, you basically stayed in Missouri. <laughs> Except for three years in Mexico, I uh, uh, Missouri born and bred. I was uh, born in St. Louis um, and lived in the Ozarks for a little bit, went to school in Columbia, and now i am uh, been in Moberly for the uh, past uh, 15 or so years. Yeah, um, when my family was, see, I, I still, see, my family is originally from Missouri. Um, oh, what part? Well, Kansas City and Springfield. Okay. And I still have family in Kansas City. I don't know my father's side of the family that well, but um, I know my mom's side of the family very well. And they live in the Springfield area. Okay, yeah, we were in Springfield the other day. Uh, we uh, went to the teacher's store down there. It's a, it's a beautiful city. They got a, a very nice zoo there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I had to, because I heard when we were living in Missouri and when we used to go down to visit my grandparents at their farm, I always heard of Mobley. And I had to take a look on Google Map to see where it was in relationship to St. Louis, Kansas City, Springfield, Sedalia, Warrensburg, Knob Noster, and Whiteman. Yeah. <laughs> and it, Mobley isn't that far away from uh, Knob Noster and them. Right, we're just uh, just uh, north of Columbia. Yeah, my wife has uh, lived here almost her whole life. Hmm. But, um, One thing I seen that you are a librarian and all that. Um, with the school openings, how are you feeling about that? Well, uh, it sounds cliche, but we are all dealing with something nobody in this country has dealt with in maybe a hundred years. Um, mm -hmm. We are getting conflicting uh, direction from the government. We, above all, want what is best for our kids. We want them to get an education, but we want them to be safe. We want to be safe. Mm -hmm. We uh, are just going to have to uh, do what we do every time. When uh, we went to online learning uh, in the spring, we only had, we really had one or two days to uh, switch over. And every teacher uh, buckled down and did it. And I know we are going to succeed in the fall, whether it is in the classroom, whether it is virtual online learning, whether it is uh, a hybrid of the two, whatever it takes to uh, serve our, our children, we are going to do it. This is going to be my 25th year as a teacher, and obviously I would like it if it was more like last year, uh, where I could uh, be hanging up posters and uh, writing lesson plans right now, but we're just going to play it by ear, and uh, I have a good feeling we're going to succeed at this. Yeah. Um, by the way, what uh, grade do you teach? I am the librarian and computer teacher at two different uh, kindergarten through second grade schools. I'm in one of them uh, right now, as you can tell. Um, I just uh, I help them uh, check out books. I read them stories. I help them develop their computer skills. Uh, it is a very fun, very rewarding job. I I am going to do this till I retire. I just love it. And keep up the writing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I have summers off and uh, those are the, always the best times to write, right? Right, right. So it's funny when dealing with an editor, they're, uh, they don't go along with the school year. So I've been told like in August, okay, I need a rewrite right now. And I'm thinking, you couldn't have told me that two months ago. <laughs> Can you just delay the printing of it for another yeah. year? <laughs> yeah. but, um, any ideas on uh, future books? 
Well, I have to, I, I've had, I've written four and a half uh, books since uh, my last one came out. I'm just looking for a home for them right now. I have a wonderful uh, editor named Mandy Hubbard and she is trying to find homes for them. Uh, one of them I've written that I'm uh, very proud of. It's called, It's Complicated. It's about four kids in a, in a high school. There's the uh, macho jock who is dating the girl who is the uh, class president. Then there's the uh, kid who's the king of the drama department, and he is dating the girl who is going to be valedictorian. But the thing is, actually, all four of them are gay, and they're not really paired up like that. They are, it's the two guys and two girls are actually really dating, but for various reasons, it can't come out. So we're all four covering for each other. But it's just a so, little house of cards, and if one person is out, and they all will be. Yeah, so, so they make it look like. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've heard of well, can't really say or heard, but um, I'm aware of when I was growing, when I was going to school myself, there were some kids that you would think that they, you think that they are, but you're not really sure. Right. Right. And hope I, I would like to live in a world where nobody would ever have to do that, where people wouldn't have to hide who they are. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. mm hmm True. True. And current, with the current administration, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, simple question: Have you ever been to any of the air shows at Whiteman? The air shows at Whiteman, I have not. I'll have to uh, check that out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping to make it back down there hopefully next year for uh the rare show, but also to visit my relatives in Springfield and try and connect up with a friend of mine who's a trans service member who's currently stationed at uh Fort Leonard Wood. All right. Well, if you ever pass through Columbia, be sure and uh, look me up and we could uh, have some coffee provided uh, COVID is over by then. Yeah, true, true. But um, I think this is about it. Um, nice to have you on. And my dog is barking. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for having me. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. And you have a nice day. So. Um, <laughs>